Hello and welcome to the Proyaki Report, Volume 1, Episode 42. The First Draft. I'm Michael Westbay, your host. Now it's coming up time for the annual amateur draft for Proyaku. High school stars like Mori Tomoya, uh, Matsui Yuki, Wada Den, and uh, Wakatsuki Kenya are names that are being thrown around as potential first picks. Um, college pitchers like Osera Daichi, Sugiura Toshihiro, and Kuri Aden are expected to just step right into the starting rotations next season. Now, I haven't heard of any players in this year's draft threatening to not sign for any but one or two particular teams, but such high-profile draftees have been in the news a lot in the past seasons. The 2012 draft, for example, saw Otani Shohei state that he wished to be drafted or rather he wished to be left out of the draft so that he could pursue a major league career. Uh, Nippon Ham, of course, gambled and won on that gamble, eventually signing the pitcher slash outfielder. The fighters, however, weren't as fortunate with their attempt to draft Takai University senior Sugano Tomoyuki in the fall of 2011. Sugano preferred to sit out the year to be drafted in 2012 by his uncle, Harakantoku, of the Giants. Chono Hisayoshi turned down Nippon Ham in 2006, then Lotte in 2008, before finally being drafted by the Giants in 2009. So rejecting the draft, while not frequent, is certainly not unheard of. However, if you go back to the very beginning of the draft here in Japan, you'll find a very different story. The date was November 17, 1965. The location was Nisei Kaikan in Hibiya, Tokyo. This marked the beginning of the amateur draft for Nippon Professional Baseball. It was wrought with dissatisfaction. Of the 132 players drafted through 18 rounds, only 52 players signed, a 39% turnover rate. Of the 80 players who passed, that is, didn't sign, 8 players eventually did sign with professional teams outside of the draft, and 13 were drafted later and signed. Kinji Shimatani had refused the draft twice more before signing with Chunichi in 1968. The remaining 59 players never turned pro. Most of the players who turned down the professional contracts did so to go on to play at the university level. One such high school player was Kazuaki Kawamoto, the only first round draft pick in 1965 to turn down a team. Kawamoto went on to Asia University, after which his documented baseball career comes to an end. There just isn't anything more out there. The Giants, in 1965, drafted Tsuno Horiuchi unchallenged in the first round. As a rookie right out of high school, Horiuchi won 16 while losing just two in 1966. Eight of the 12 teams had Horiuchi on their list of 12 players who they submitted to the commissioner's office in attempts to get a player in the first round. But only the Giants had ranked Horiuchi as their first choice. Horiuchi quickly became the ace for the Giants' V9 team. There were two teams who had to draw for their first picks, a scene that has been repeated time and time again in the draft ever since. Toei drew their first pick, Toshiaki Moriyasu, who Sankei also had chosen in the first round. So Sankei, as their second pick, chose Kazuaki Kawamoto. Now, as mentioned, Kawamoto decided to further his education, so Sankei missed out on their first pick altogether. Kintetsu drew the lucky ticket for Kinjiro Tabata, 
who Hiroshima had also picked, so Hiroshima settled for infielder Makino Sano. But the biggest objection of the draft came from the father of Chiba Prefectural Choshi Shogyo High School's ace pitcher, Masaki Kitaru. Kitaru's father just couldn't believe that his boy went in the second round. And who was this no-name Makio Ishidoko taking the first round pick by Hanshin? And, uh, you know, the father and the press both wanted to know the answer to that question. It turns out that Ishidoko played for Hanshin for five years, only four at the top team, appearing in a total of 21 games at Ichigun, with a 1-1 one one record over 46 and two-thirds innings and with an ERA of 2.68. And Kitaru? Well, he played for the Tokyo Lotte Audience for 11 years, winning the Pacific League pitching title with a 1.72 ERA in 1969 and having the most wins in the Pacific League in 1971 with 24. He finished his career with 112 wins, 80 losses, 3 saves, and a 3.05 ERA. His father, while he also thought he was better than Horiuchi, might have had a point so far as Ishidoko going in the first round was concerned. And now it's time for the Pocket Calendar. I've gotten word that the Tokyo Swallows podcast has been recorded and will be released later this week. It's the Year in Review episode, and there are quite a few issues that I'm sure that Spabe Gundan will be covering. And while the good men of the Tsubabe Gundan will be looking at this past season, John and Jim will be having a look at the first stage of the postseason and perhaps the matchups to follow, depending on today's, that is Sunday's, results. They also plan to talk further about Kokubo as Samurai Japan's manager and Tanishige taking over the Dragon Reigns as a player manager. That will be released tomorrow, Monday, October 14, both Sports Day and National Railroad Day here in Japan. So, what do you have to do? Race a train while listening to the podcast? You decide. Anyway, with that, I submit to you this week's Pro Yaki Report. Thank you for joining me. Until next week, take care. <laughs>